Next item on agenda is resolution number 210202, and that will be introduced by Commissioner DeWitt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to say before I read this that uh, I introduced this last month and we pulled it because we didn't have enough information. I was asked to uh, just, just bring this resolution forward uh, and we'll have both sides uh, discuss this should, should we get a second to it. So to the Honorable Rick Brewer, Chairman and members of the Hawkins County Board of Commission in regular session, met this 22nd day of February, 2021. Resolution in reference, resolution in support of Drug Dealer Liability Act lawsuit. The Hawkins County Legislative Body meeting in regular session, 22nd day of February, 2021, a quorum being present and a majority voting in the affirmative, hereby resolves as follows. Whereas Hawkins County, as well as other counties in Tennessee and in surrounding states, has experienced an epidemic related to the distribution and use of opioids by its citizens that has generated critical issues and problems for Hawkins County, including but not limited to opioid addiction by Hawkins County citizens, drug overdose deaths, the birth of drug dependent babies, arising criminal charges, convictions for the illegal sale and use of opioids, as well as other crimes resulting from the opo opioid abuse epidemic including but not limited to burglary, theft, and fraud, and the lost productivity of the citizens in the workplace, damage and destruction to the family unit, all resulting from the illegal sale, distribution, and use of opioids in Hawkins County. Whereas District Attorney Dan E. Armstrong is duly elected District Attorney General and for the third judicial district of the state of Tennessee. Whereas General Armstrong brought a lawsuit in 2017 through the firm of Brainstater, Strange, and Jennings PLLC to recover money for Hawkins County under Tennessee's Drug, Li Drug Dealer Liability Act, DDLA, and that lawsuit is pending Hawkins County Circuit Court. Hawkins County Commission hereby resolves that it fully supports the lawsuit, approves of the actions taken in the lawsuit thus far on its behalf, approves of the lawsuit going forward with Hawkins County as the main plaintiff, and retains District Attorney Armstrong and the law firm of Brainstetter, Strange, and Jennings PLLC as counselor in this matter. Upon approval of resolution 2021-0202, uh, also approved is the attached retainer agreement between Brainstetter, Strange, and Jennings PLLC and District Attorney Dan E. Armstrong, 3rd Judicial District for Hawkins County. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Motion by Commissioner DeWitt is there a second. Second by Commissioner Goins. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, before we get started in discussion, I'd like to have both sides kind of present what uh, what their position is on this, and we can start with uh, Attorney General Armstrong. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner DeWitt. First of all, I want to apologize to this body for not having been here in January. Uh, it got put on the agenda and I didn't know it was on the agenda so I wasn't here and I apologize to you for that I'm not I don't blame anybody but myself for not realizing that the second thing I would tell you is, and uh, is the history of this lawsuit but before I do that I want to promise you what Elizabeth Taylor promised her fourth husband I'm, I'm trying not to keep you long <laughs> but, uh, but it's important that you know the history Back in June of 2017, I filed a lawsuit on your behalf and on behalf of every county in my district, which includes Green, Hawkins, and Hancock County, under the Drug Dealer Liability Act. And we sued street dealers, we sued doctors, we sued pill mills, and we sued three pharmaceutical companies, Purdue, Mallon Crock, and Endo. We began uh, having discovery in that case shortly thereafter, and it's the only case pending in the state of Tennessee where discovery has been complete. Hundreds of hours of testimony have been taken. Thousands and thousands of, of uh, documents have been uh, reviewed. Motion hearing after motion hearing has been held. And uh, so that's, that's the background. Let me tell you why I filed the lawsuit on your behalf. I had three objectives. Number one was to stop or, or decrease the flow of opioids into our county. 
Number two was to hold responsible those who contributed to the problem. And number three was to bring resources back to Hawkins County to combat the problem. Uh, as to the flow of opioids, we have been successful in slowing the rate of opioids that are being prescribed and the, and the number of opio opioids that are on the street. Now, unfortunately though, the manufacturers of opioids created a new class of addiction that are now involved in the criminal justice system and they are now turning to meth. So you might say that the biggest problem facing Hopkins County today is meth, and I would agree with you, but it's because of the addiction caused by the opioid epidemic. So I feel like we've been successful in that regard. Secondly, we wanted to bring to account those who've caused this problem. Uh, Dr. Muhammad from Marshtown has uh, consented uh, to judgment in this case and will be providing testimony. He served over 30 months in federal prison for Medicaid fraud, and in his elocution of his uh, guilty plea in federal court, he testified to the scheme where he had drive-by patients who he would not see, he would not examine, he would not do any test on, he simply they came by and he wrote prescriptions for opioids to them. Purdue filed bankruptcy pretty early on and they're trying to structure a global settlement in their bankruptcy court. Uh, my attorneys and I uh, have made an appearance in that court and we filed claims on your behalf. Mallinckrodt, when we had a trial date back in May of 2020, we were within a week, maybe two, of that trial. When the opioid, I mean, the COVID restrictions from the Supreme Court came down and stopped all jury trials. Mallinckrodt, before that pronouncement was made, filed bankruptcy. And they cited as one of the reasons they filed bankruptcy was my lawsuit that was pending on your behalf. Endo is the lone remaining pharmaceutical company that has not filed for bankruptcy. They are trying to do everything they can not to face trial in Judge Moody's court in Sullivan County. We are in this posture as we stand here today. We have a motion hearing set for February the 26th in front of, uh, in front of Judge Moody. That motion hearing, we have a motion to substitute the counties who have passed resolutions to go in as plaintiffs and I come out and come in as attorney of record. That was necessary because of the Supreme Court decision in another case. There was a sister case filed in Campbell County. That judge dismissed the Direct Labor Liability Act claims against the pharmaceutical companies and also ruled that the DAs did not have standing. Judge Moody never ruled those two things. He always said we had standing in the Drug Dealer Liability Act uh, apply. That went up to the Court of Appeals and the Court of Appeals reversed that judge and said not only does the Drug Dealer Liability Act apply, but the DAs have standing to bring lawsuit. That then got appealed to the state Supreme Court. And the state Supreme Court in their ruling, the first ruling of its kind in this country, said that the Drug Dealer Liability Act that the state of Tennessee has passed absolutely applies to pharmaceutical companies. They also said that while I could represent you in this lawsuit, I couldn't be the plaintiff for you in this lawsuit. So that's why we're here today. In order to finish the job that we've started, we're asking you to pass a resolution authorizing us to go forward so that we can get you a resolution. We're right now, with, with one possible exception, which may be New York City, we are the next trial in line in the nation. All the NDL cases have been stayed. Nothing is pending to go to trial in the NDL, which is what the Jesse Law Firm has filed on your behalf. Before I go any further, I want you to know that uh, 
I have with me uh, Tricia Hertzfeld, who is uh, with the Branch Standard Law Firm, and my very good friend Jeff Haygood, who is from the Perger community here in Hawkins County. Both of them have helped me in this lawsuit. Uh, both of them support me uh, to be here before you today, and I appreciate it. Jeff is and Tricia both. Uh, complex litigation experts. You are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing star six. Star six. That's okay. They are complex litigation experts. They would not advise you to go forward with this if they thought it would harm you. Which brings me to something I have to address. I, I hate to address this, but I've got to. When y'all met in January, you were told some things that just flat were not true. First of all, you were told, and this is a quote from the Kingsport Times, quote, the lawsuit will do nothing but harm the county. That is the furthest thing from the truth. This lawsuit cannot harm the county. All it can do is give you another avenue of recovery. You were also told that our lawsuit had been dismissed. It has not been dismissed. You can go to the Southern County Court right now and pull the docket and you'll see that it's set for hearing in front of Judge Moody, February the 26th. Also, apparently, uh, there was a, I can't put it in the way, a threat made to you that if you proceeded, not only would you owe the Branch Center Law Firm 25%, but you would owe the Jesse Law Firm 30% of any recovery we got. It's, I can't believe that Miss Jesse would take the position that she would be entitled to 30% of a settlement she had absolutely nothing to do with. And I can't believe that she would do anything that would be contrary to the best interest of Hawkins County. I am an elected official. I get no money from this lawsuit. My only concern is Hawkins County. I am asking you to please pass this resolution so we can finish what we started and get you a state remedy instead of waiting on the federal courts. You know as well as, it just makes common sense if you'll think about it, a state cause of action with a few counties is going to give you more recovery than in a MDL lawsuit where thousands of jurisdictions from all over the country are involved in, including New York and California. That there's just not going to be a lot of money come out of that that's going to come back to Hawkins County. We have a chance to get you some significant money from this lawsuit that we filed. So I'm asking you as your elected official, and I'm telling you as your elected, I would not lead you down a path that would cause you harm. I'm only trying to get the best possible outcome for you. And so I would ask that you pass the resolution and I also would like uh, the opportunity if, if given to respond to anything Ms. Jesse uh, would like to see at this point. If you don't mind, we're gonna hold questions until uh, Ms. Jesse has a chance. Thank you, General Armstrong. Uh, Crystal Jesse needs to, uh, to address this as well. Thank you, and thank you for having me here again tonight. Um, he is elected official, but you all are elected for Hawkins County, and you all are here tonight to, to vote on whether to go, to go with him with this lawsuit. And I want to go over the three things that he said were misleading before. As we all know, newspapers may take a blurb, but not take the whole thing. First, the harm to the county. We absolutely believe that splitting the causes of actions will harm the county in the ultimate outcome. Secondly, as to the splitting, there was no threat. There was only one pile of money. We discussed this the last time. Two of the three companies are in bankruptcy. Those two companies, we've already filed a claim for you. Why would we hire another firm that has costs already attached to them to file the same claim? Second, in regard to ENDO, the one left they want to go forward with, we assume, rightfully or wrongfully so, from what we have heard down the pipeline, that more likely than not, they will end up filing for bankruptcy too. 
That's what I said last time. Why, why hire two firms to pay the same growth when we already have our costs and we already have our claim in the bankruptcy case? Additionally, as to Indo, if, if they come and want to settle, which we have spoken with them, and they said they would only do a settlement with everyone across the board, we have to consider we have a contract for our settlement for 30%, they do for 25. If, or I assume 25. If that is true, then you have one pot of money that we're both pulling from. So that's twice as much. Um, however, the big issue before you, before I go any further, is that there's not a contract attached to this resolution. I've had several commissioners to call me about that. It wasn't presented this time. So I don't think it's rightfully before the commission. And I would ask this. I had to go through the Public Safety Commission because Hawkins County was very specific. They did not want to sue any local pharmacies or any local pharmacy techs, any local doctors. We had to put that in our contract. We also had to put the percentages. Also, we had to outline what costs were, the costs were at the time. We had to go through the Public Safety Committee. What I suggest, because he mentions the hearing on February 26, this needs to go back to the Public Safety Committee and have a contract presented. At that point in time, we need to address what cost are we talking about? You heard Mr. Armstrong specifically mention hundreds of thousands of hours. That's a lot of money they've already invested. Does that mean the county is on the hook for back hundreds and thousands of hours of work? Because if so, that too will come out of your bankruptcy settlement. That too will pull from any malincrop money we also may have. Second, as to the dismissal, the Supreme Court dismissed it as to the district attorney's claims. That's why he's here. Because we told you in 2017, we supported Mr. Armstrong. We said do both of them because Stranch and his firm represented Mr. Armstrong. He didn't represent the counties. That's the reason we came to you first and we had you sign a contract and I went through the Public Safety Committee and I came before you and I answered all the questions because we represent you. That's the reason we're here telling you tonight that it is our opinion if you go with them, number one, you will have duplicative claims in the bankruptcy case. It will do nothing but harm the county and will take money from the county. Number two, if they then have their case dismissed, it will have a detrimental impact on our case going forward. With that being said, does anyone else have any further questions? Let's hold questions for just a minute and, and let Jim Armstrong uh, have a couple of minutes of rebuttal. Oh, I'm sorry. You want me? One other issue. It, one of the counties specifically asked this and he mentioned a state versus a federal cause of action. I pulled your complaint because I wanted you all to understand his case, the resolution says that it's filed in Hawkins County. It's not, it's filed in Sullivan County, Bristol. Our case is filed in federal court in Green County. Though we are filed in federal court, we have alleged both state and federal causes of action against these three same manufacturers. Specifically, starting on page 34 of the complaint, it goes into the specific as to the three. On page 61, it alleges the state cause of action. So just because you hear state court versus federal court, we had to allege the same to enter federal court. So that, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. General. Thank you. First of all, uh, they're not the same claims. We filed under the Drug Dealer Liability Act. There is no mention of the Drug Dealer Liability Act in their lawsuit. The standard of proof that we have is we have to prove that Endo knowingly engaged in the illegal drug market. That's our standard of proof. That has nothing to do with any claim that's pending in the federal court. Nothing. What's good about the posture we're in now is that the state Supreme Court has looked at the allegations of the complaint in Campbell County and they said if you can prove those facts they are absolutely liable to the to the they're absolutely liable under the drug dealer liability act well guess where those facts came from the discovery we did in this case those hundreds of hours of discovery and those thousands of pages of documents now 
The Jesses are here taking a different position than they took. She just admitted that. Before we asked you to sign this resolution, they were all for both of them going forward. I have never <coughs> spoken against their lawsuit. But I'm asking you to let me go forward because if I'm right, significant money is available. It's not going to go through a bankruptcy court. It's not going to go through an MDL and be filtered through thousands of jurisdictions. And let me tell you what the status of the counties are right now. Every county that's voted on this has passed it. It was on Green County's uh, agenda last week, and it was pulled, I guess, because they're wanting to wait and see what happens at the February 26th motion. Well, let me tell you what the danger in that is. If we don't know that that court is going to give us leave to go back to the counties that haven't joined us and join. We're asking for 30 days. We're asking the, the court to give us the five counties who've already signed up with us. Unicorn County signing up tonight. There's no opposition in Unicorn County. It's going through tonight. You're the only county left besides Green County in the lawsuit I filed. Think about that. Think about the, the nine counties of the first, second, and third judicial district in one baby doe. Ten people that Endo's got to deal with. And they're staring down the face of the trial as opposed to Endo going to the NBA and settling with thousands and thousands of cases. Where do you think you're going to be? To now, as to in those threat apparently through Miss Jesse that they might file bankruptcy, uh, that ain't gonna happen. Their stocks tripled in the last month. They're not going into bankruptcy. They're trying their best to avoid bankruptcy. And so, in one sense, Miss Jesse's making the argument that Endo would make to. And that's a strange position to be. Having said that, I'll answer any questions I can. Let's let Ms. Jesse, do you have anything real quick to say to that? And then we'll open for questions. No, I, I really do not. And the endo is not, the bankruptcy as to endo is not coming from them. It is what we have heard and surmised along the way. But we are we are fighting them just as well as we are everyone else. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman, let's open it up for questions if you can. Has anybody got any questions for either? So, just to, to break this down for us and my lawyers, just, um, we've already hired her, correct? There's, there's a contract there, so even if we vote this in, her lawsuit goes forward, correct? Because correct. there's already a contract totally in place. Totally so, um, so, so that, so, so basically, we're choosing if, if there are, there is money that that basically we got to pay those of you represents. Is that well, kind of the dumb down of it? That, that's what she's saying. I can't believe at the end of the day that uh, knowing her, her fondness for Hawkins County, that they would insist on charging you 30% for a settlement they had nothing to do with if it settles through the drug dealer liability. But even if that's true, no taxpayer money is going to be spent. It's going to come out of whatever the proceeds are. And I, my suggestion to you is there's not a chance at millions of dollars if I, if we, if I don't go forward. So even half of a million of millions of dollars is more than the thousands of dollars coming from an MDA. If that helps him. Okay, and is there a reason that your uh, retainer agreement was not attached with this resolution? I don't know. It was attached to the last one. It was attached at the last I'm just, it was on last month's agenda we just did not attach it to their last month. Yes. Um, and, and so okay. if you can refresh not mine then, what is, what, uh, what is the basis of that retainer agreement? That retainer agreement, uh, you agree for me to represent you in the Southern County Court on the Drug Dealer Liability Act claim and you owe me that. You agree for the Branch Standard Law Firm to continue to represent that claim and if they would get 25% of any proceeds plus their costs of any proceeds if it's a settlement. Now here's the thing that they would tell you, and she's here, she can talk on her own, but uh, 
they've always maintained that they're going to ask the judge to set them free. So the last resort is to take 25%. They don't want to do that. But they'll, have, they'll do that if that's the only way it can do, that we can do it. The other thing you need to know is whatever settlement we come up with, it's coming back to you. You're going to have to agree to the settlement. If you, if you become the plaintiffs, you're going to have to say yeah or no. Now, let me say this. It's possible, although it's very unlikely, that we could lose the motion to substitute. You've lost nothing if we do. It's possible that Endo could file bankruptcy. It's not likely. You lose nothing. What is likely is we're either going to go to trial <coughs> or Endo's going to settle. Endo has faced trial at least once or twice, and that's the only time they've ever settled with clients in these, in these cases. You might remember about a year or so ago, actually it's been a couple years now, Cleveland, Ohio was ready to go to trial. On the, in the MDL cases that Miss Jesse and them filed, and on the eve of trial, they settled. Endo does not want to go to trial, and they especially don't want to go to trial in front of Judge Moody, because I'll tell you why. Judge Moody has already held them in contempt for failing to comply with discovery. In fact, in, I think it's still pending, he's still considering whether or not to enter a default judgment against him. And you know, we've, we've asked for $2.4 billion. I'm not saying he will enter that order, but that's still the form. And I'm sorry, I'm going on too. No, that's okay. Well, and, and so, and you keep mentioning this on the 26th. Do you, do you accept Judge Moody that day? I know Judge, it'll, it'll be. Uh, no, he gave us this just in the last week. He's given us this trial day, our motion day, and it's going to be by Zoom. Okay. And I will be appearing on, if you pass the resolution, I'll be appearing on your behalf. I'll be there anyway because Hamlin County and Hancock County have retained this retain me so I'll be on that call. And and like you mentioned the the thousands and thousands of hours, if if you win that then it's, we're not on the hook for any of those funds. There is not one taxpayer dollar at risk by doing this. Not one. Not one deal. Thank you. Miss Jesse, would you want to come up and stand also? Somebody might have a question for you. Yeah, and uh, I would like to address what he just said. The, the question is, if they win, you're on the hook to pay them back cost. So cost they've already spent before you've ever signed up with them. We don't have a contract that says otherwise. My contract was very specific. The other issue that has always bugged me, and I have the email from Mr. Stranch dated January 24, 2018 to Mr. Phillips and copied to Melissa McCracken in Hawkins County. It always has bothered me because of my fondness to Hawkins County, why they're asking 25% now when they were only asking 20% then. And in the last resolution, if we had that contract, it's a blank contract. It doesn't even, it doesn't even have Hawkins County name on it. So what I would tell you and what I have encouraged everyone, especially Washington County is the biggest county and they've taken that to heart. Your contract needs to be very specific if you choose to go as specific as mine was. They've, they have almost copied specific information about counterclaims, cross claims, because in their lawsuit, there was an original cross claim against the counties. So are they going to defend you in that if it comes up? Who's going to pay for the past causes of action if they win? Does that come out of your pot even though you weren't a client? So what I would tell you, again, as I said from the beginning, if you consider going at all, it will not hurt you to put this off, but send it back to the Public Safety Committee, get the correct contract, compare it to our contract to safeguard this county, that we all are here to help and see what happens on the 26th because that's the most important thing. On the 26th, it could be over with and the judge dismiss it all together. So, but my fear for you is the ambiguity in the contract and it's not clear and it's not here before us so we can sit and pick it apart and make an informed decision. Commissioner Tyler. <laughs> 
most of my questions were answered, uh, but I'm not real clear yet, Mr. Armstrong. Yes. The, the back hours and uh, uh, supplies and so forth, will we be billed for that if we uh, sign that firm? The, the total cost will be, you'll be given the total cost figure plus what they're asking for in regards to the um, 25%, okay? That'll be split among Baby Doe and all the counties, okay? So it's not like we're asking you to do, it's not like we're asking you to back pay. There's gonna be zero, at the end of the day, if we're successful, all you're gonna do is receive money. You're not gonna pay, not one cent of taxpayer money is gonna be spent. Not one. But that would come out of the cost of the settlement, is what we're saying. Yes. So technically, we are losing money no. if we had to pay back the back stuff. Well, but you're, but you're not losing money because what money was spent was spent in developing the evidence. There's no discovery done in the NDA. None. The Tennessee case in the NDA has to multi district litigation that's up in Ohio that got removed to Ohio is sitting there and absolutely nothing's being done on it. Nothing. And so, and I know she made reference to she wanted to go into an executive session and talk to you. Uh, my theory is uh, what she's probably doing is trying to play play Endo against you and against me. So, in, and Endo's playing the game because I know if we can get Miss Jesse to help us stop Hawkins County from getting this lawsuit, we're going to settle for a lot less money. That's what I think is going on. The, the danger in putting this off, if I can just address this, and I'll, and I'll shut up. And I've stayed with you longer than Elizabeth Taylor stayed with the court, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, let me say this. We don't have a guarantee that Judge Moody is going to allow additional time. We do know we can supplement the motion and say an additional county has signed on, and we feel confident that he will grant that at the appropriate time. But I can't promise you. It's like I told Green County. I got a I got a, a text message from somebody in Green County after they voted to table it. Where does this leave us? And quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know if they're out or not. We just have to find out on Friday. But it's not going to hurt you to get in now. Nothing's going to be different after the 26th unless we're out and then you're still not out anything. You passed the resolution and that was it. Commissioner Harrell. Uh, uh, if you do lose, the county is still no cost, correct? None. <clears throat> so I guess my question is for you, Mr. Phillips, what's your advice on this? County Attorney. Well, one one thing I want to clear up is on this these uh, 25 percent and 30 percent fee arrangements. Is it my understanding from what you said that if you win, that money is not going to be? In other words, could could you win and get certain monies, and she win and get certain monies, and they would not be the same monies? Is that what you're telling us? No, I can't tell you that for 100 percent. What I can tell you is this. In these type of litigations, where there's piecemeal litigation, how many times when a settlement is entered into on a local case, there's a provision in that settlement that this won't affect your ability to collect money from a global settlement. And here's why some some uh, defendants will sign that is because there's not going to be much money coming back. You're you're fighting with Los Angeles, New York, Cleveland, Ohio. If we go, if you allow us to go over, for us, we're coming back and you're going to see where the dime's going. Does that help me? Well, so are you saying it's unlikely that the county would have to pay 55% attorney's fees one to one firm and one to another in a settlement? Mr. Phillips, you are one of the finest attorneys I know. <laughs> you, you understand 
you understand that it's going to be impossible for them to try to claim a 30% share of a suit that we settled in Southern County that never made an appearance in. That's just not going to fly ethically. Well, it would seem to me to be hard for you to win on a judgment to get certain monies, and then this other lawsuit will come in and say, look, we win on that same lawsuit and we get a portion of that same money. But it's not the that, same. That doesn't seem like a well, logical. The, well, the damages, the damages are similar, but the claims are totally different. The claims are totally different. So let's say we go forward and let's say we lose on the Drug Data Liability Act claim. It, is, it does nothing to your uh, nuisance lawsuit that you file. It does nothing to it. If we win, then yes, what we win and what y'all approve to take will affect, could affect what you may get out of a global settlement. But Mr. Phillips, you know, if you have a global settlement that involves 7,500 municipalities and counties and one that involves 10, where are you going to get the most money is the one that involves 10. That makes sense. So you have to say it. So what's your advice on this, Mr. Do you think where the pass is or what do you think we're going to do? Well, I think it's certainly up to the commissioners, but from what I'm understanding uh, is, I'm not saying the book, that's true. What I'm understanding is that it's highly unlikely that we would have to pay 55% attorney's fees uh, if we if we pass Mr. Armstrong's uh, proposed resolution. Uh, that's what I'm understanding. If that's the case, I think that would be something the commission would certainly consider as a as a uh, favorable point for Mr. Armstrong. I think that. Uh we probably just need to look at that contract we got with Miss Jesse and let you look at that before because I, I think it's talking about any settlement that they're going to get yes. 30 percent of it yes mr chairman I, I, that is exactly what it says but i can tell you and i believe mr phillips will back me up you can enter into such a contract but if you don't think they've ethically earned that money you don't have to pay it and there can be a lawsuit that would, that would in look they should get no money if they did nothing on the case that would probably be a difficult position <laughs> <laughs> well, well what, but here's what i'm saying your, your retainer agreement says all lawsuits so that means that if so that means that if somebody had come in and filed a lawsuit on your behalf and not asked for your retainer, that they're going to get that money, and they did nothing on it. You're taking it out. What we would present to you is a settlement. What you do with the Jesse Law Firm's up to you. I guess that's what we're paying you six bucks. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Are you saying Do you have any other questions, Mister Real? No, sir. Uh, the next on the board would be Mr. Barr. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Burrell basically asked the same thought process that I had. I was curious on Mr. Phillips' uh, position. So I, I'm good. Could I ask uh, Ms. Hartsfield to address the issues? Of no, I, I was still on the board. Okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Mr. Fields, you're next. Withdraw. <clears throat> Mr. Alvis. Okay, I'm next. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's her birthday. And it's her birthday. I'm sorry, I didn't make her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to say that, boy, if I'm reading this correctly, if we sign this, and we have to pay, we have to pay out the proceeds. If we don't sign this, we don't get anything here. You will, your the lawsuit I filed on your behalf in, in Kingsport will terminate. Okay. There will be no settlement at all. Just wanted to hear that. Okay. I also want to know, um, I know that you had, I think you said this in the states, that the retainer amount, something about going, no, she, Crystal said it went from 20 to 25. She's referring to an email that was sent early on 
Uh, Ms. Hartsfield, would you like to address Did she that? answer that question for me? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate you all um, hearing us out. I, I haven't seen that email. Um, there is a there is a partner at my firm named Mr. Stranch. I, I, I'm not aware of, of that email. I'm happy to take a look at it, but I can tell you that the rate that we've negotiated for each of our counties that we represent has been 25% which I'll note has been lower than any other firm that we've noted has been doing this opioid litigation. And that's of course because we care the most about trying to, as General Armstrong said, stop the flow of illegal opioids into your community um, and to really kind of see what kind of resources we can bring back in order to do that. That's been our whole point. And I, I don't want to go on for too much, but if you'll just indulge me for one second. I should tell you if my partner, um, Mr. Strange, could be here right now, Jim Strange, um, he's from Kingsport originally. He can't be here because his wife won't let him because of COVID. She won't let him in the house. Um, but when he gets vaccinated, maybe he can come back. Um, but I, I'm here instead, and unfortunately, you get me. Um, he's from Kingsport, and the reason we filed this case to begin with, the whole reason that our law firm got interested in it, is because he went home and heard about the problem um, with how many babies were being born dependent and what it was doing to the schools and the family units and everybody that it is that he grew up with. He just turned 74 years old. Um, and he said, this is it. He came to me in my office and said, Trish, this is it. We gotta find a way to go get these guys. Um, and, and this is gonna be it for me. This is how I'm going out. Um, so this isn't about us trying to make money. It's about, you know, if we're talking about money, we're just trying to, you know, cover our costs. We're gonna try real hard to get the defendants to pay for it. There's a special thing in this statute that says that you can go to the court and have a court order them to pay for it. Um, we get the defendants to pay for it on their own so we don't have to touch whatever award that you get. So we've, we've said that, we will do that. I, I make that promise to you. Um, because we want to try to maximize as much money as we can get back for, for Hawkins County. So Mr. Street from here, I know that's what he would say, and I appreciate you taking time here. Okay. May, I, may I respond to oh. that? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, if I could just finish. Um, the, the other concern I think somebody said about what if somebody gets sued or, or something like that, um, you know, I'm a member of my firm, so I can make the representations. They have to, they have to stick by them. Um, that's how it works. But you know, this should be about getting money back to Hawkins County. Um, you know, any issue about what lawyers going to get what? I mean, that's just a fuss about lawyers. That's just between lawyers. You know, my advice, of course, I can't really advise you, but is to get as much money back for Hawkins County as you can. And if you're worried at all about counterclaims and all this other stuff that somebody else was talking about. I mean, we'll offer to you what we've offered to many other counties who've had that concern. We'll put a line in your um, in your um, in your retainer agreement that says we agree to indemnify you in case there's any counterclaim. Um, and if that's the case, counterclaim comes. It's on me and my law firm. And you know, fighting with other lawyers, it's going to be on me and my law firm. But I, I would hate for that to distract from you know really bringing money back to this community and having the best chance you can to get the biggest amount of money and, and the quickest. So you're saying that if there is a counterclaim, you will only take your 25% and what you have actually um, spent hours for various types of, of work and, and research. Oh. And that if the other firm, namely Ms. Jesse's firm, was a counterclaim, then you would take care of that 30%. Not that we would necessarily take care of but you would fight with but them. But we would fight with them. I mean, and if I, you had the incentive to pay, you would pay them. We would, figure, we would figure that all out. I mean, that would be something, you know, you're already on hook for 30% from the Jessies, but there's no way I can imagine that it would be more than 30%. If they settle theirs, you know, 30% from theirs, and we settle ours, and 25% from ours, only if we can't get the defendants or the court to order it. Um, but, you know, what I can promise you is, I hate that this has become lawyers arguing with each other over money because that's just not really the, that's not really the point. That's what they mean. I, I, I hate it. I, it's one of those things I just hate about. I hate about it. I just I hate it. Well, I hate the fact that our little county has turned into a drug haven. And I used to work at DHS. And
and, and just to follow up on that, if, if that's okay, I can just tell you we've taken, you know, we've sat for over 150 days of deposition, and you probably don't know what those depositions have been. Um, but we've had your sheriff who sat for deposition. Um, we've had other folks from your county who sat for deposition. But in addition to that, um, we've deposed all of the big CEOs. The salespeople who are living in your community, the people that are making the decision to target Hawkins County, and you know, all the way up to the CEO and the director of security of Endopharmaceuticals. I personally deposed me. I personally deposed the CEO of Endopharmaceuticals on your behalf. I personally asked questions about the nine counties. I asked questions about Hawkins County. I asked. I asked about Bulls Gap, I asked about Bean Station. I asked those questions. I had the numbers of what pill to every single pharmacy in your community. We can trace them all. We know who the pill mill doctors were, and we know exactly how it all happened. We know that because we've spent four years litigating this case, going over 10 million documents. So as General Armstrong said, our goal from the beginning has been to stop this. It's not like it's not like this everywhere, so you know, it's not. Northeast Tennessee is the worst in the country with maybe the exception of West Virginia. And it didn't happen by accident, and I can tell you that because I've done the depositions, I've asked the hard questions to the CEOs, I've seen the documents. It wasn't a mistake. They knew. The answer was they were making too much money and they decided not to. And I've had a thing called the Tennessee effect. Tennessee effect, as things were so bad in the nine counties and in Tennessee, they called it the Tennessee effect. So many people were dying based on their pills here in Tennessee. They consider pulling it from the market. They said, we're making too much money. Too many people are taking our pills. So those are the types of things that we, we found. I agree with you. Money doesn't solve all the problems. Um, there should be truth telling. There should be a day where you all can sit down and watch them held accountable, the evidence come out. We can explain and demonstrate to you exactly how this problem happened and get to work on, on finding a solution. It bothers me, it concerns me that she says she does not know about this email when she was carbon copying on it, as was Mr. Armstrong. I brought a copy of it for the county commission, if I may elicit the sheriff, so you can see that the 20% again, and you can see that she was copied on it. Um, your issue is going to be, we told you in 2017, that it wouldn't work. It got dismissed because of the counties. He has to have the counties. We told you in 2017 it wouldn't work. Today we still believe our lawsuit is the best going forward. The issue for this lawsuit is when Indo comes to you and says we are going to settle, but practicing 16 years, they say they're, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. They say that they're going to settle, but they settle all claims in 16 years. I've never had a defendant say, I'm going to piecemeal claims. So to settle all claims, they're going to come to us and to them. And that's when the issue is going to come up. Because to settle our claim, you have to pay for our cost and 30%. To settle their claim, you have to pay for their cost, including back costs. That sitting here, nobody has given you a figure of the back cost. That is concerning. I would ask for a dollar amount to put in the contract so you know. And they're 25%. And then you heard her say it would be an argument in between the attorneys. The problem is it's not that easy. If we argue between the attorneys, Hawkins County is going to have to argue with us because we both have contracts with them. So because of this, we've advised all of our counties not to enter this contract. And specifically, the contract you have or don't have or that's been alluded to, I would go line by line. We don't have it here. They can tell you they'll make any changes they want to, but until you put them through the public safety committee like you did me and make them change in front of you, work for work, what you want, I wouldn't sign anything, anything at all. Okay, I've got another question. Uh, first, though, it says the number most likely is 20%. So yes. That's not, that's not for sure. So why is your retainer 30% and theirs is 25 Our retainer started out at one-third um, just because we knew at that point in time we are with the group that has been the only group, I think, so far that has been successful in this type of lawsuit. We dropped it down to 30% because nationwide we treated all of our clients the same and so when we came before you we told you 
different. We're offering this to you at 30%. It will be 30% across the board. So the county knew that coming in, and we have not deviated that for any of our counties. And that was in 2017? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I do not. I, I started presenting in Tennessee in July in 2017. I don't know if I came here first or where I went. I think I went to Hamlet County first. And then it was voted on in late 2017 and early 2018. So I couldn't give you the exact date, but I can go back and pull the retainer. So he filed his lawsuit in June of 2017. So you actually filed your suit after you filed this suit? For, I don't know exactly when your date was filed, but yes. But remember, my heading, like I gave to you last time, is just for Hawkins County. It's not 10 other counties. So when he says you're with a lot of people in MDL, we are in the MDL for discovery purposes. We have pulled discovery already for all of our counties. We've had our expert deposed. So you're a class action. Right? We are a class action, but here's the thing. In 16 years, I can tell you, absolutely. If I bring you a number and Hawkins County doesn't agree to it, we're going to trial. I have no problem objecting because I have to live here and I have to see you every day. So if you tell me it's not what you want, we will object. We'll call a jury and we'll go to trial. Trial will be in Greene County, Tennessee. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Mr. Riles. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. With so much confusion and questions that needs to be answered, we'll be here till tomorrow. I'll make a uh, motion that we send this back to the Public Safety Committee and use that committee's recommendation to uh, bring back next month's meeting. Therefore, I put that in form of the motion, please. But now we have to have a resolution file before the Motion. Motion by Commissioner Alvis that we send it back to the Public Safety Committee. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Second. 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 Uh, my question would be if we do send this back to the public safety committee, are we going when was it you was needing something? Well, here's what I here's what I can tell you. I know I know for a fact we're in front of Judge Moody on Friday. Okay. And his motion is going to consider whether he's going to allow the counties to substitute in his plaintiffs. We are asking him for 30 days to sign up the counties that haven't signed up yet. By the way, every county that they signed who's voting on this has passed it. Not one has not passed it. In this, in my lawsuit. Okay. Now, what I would tell you is this, just keep this in mind, and I'm not throwing this figure out because I can't, but just use your common sense. If you're settling with 10,000 people versus 10, you're going to get more money when you settle with 10. And if, and if $5 million versus $500,000, even if the Jesse's, bless their heart, can't live without the 30%, you're still way better off. I've had, sorry. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Oh, wait. Discussion on the resolution. The yes, sir. I'm trying to put my book. It won't let her go. Mr. Fields. Call the question. 
Mr. Roach and Mr. Barrett on the board. They weren't on the board when I pushed my button. I was just questioning. They were on their whole go. Jason, Mr. Roach was on there a while ago, and Mr. Barrett also. So, you know. I'm going back in the third minute when they don't say it and call the boys and it's in that. So uh, the, only, the only, I guess, point that I have here is I've heard a lot tonight about what we can do about putting something in a contract and possibly if we are able to and so on. But tonight we are actually going to vote to retain uh, this firm to represent us. Is that correct, sir? That's correct, and I'm, and I'm making the representation to you. Apparently, Ms. Jesse thinks the gold standard is the Washington County contract. We'll present you the same thing. Okay, so... Uh, with all that said, and once again, I, I think I heard a representative from the law firm saying uh, we will put in a line to indemnify the county in the event that we have we don't we don't have that in a contract at this time. So whatever we're voting on does not include that, and we are committing to retain you all, essentially without that in a contract. But she's committing. Okay, put it in there. Okay. I'll put it in. It's another one. We've done that for other counties. And if you look, I finally read for the very first time that email, um, and it talks about indemnification in there. So I mean, we're we're happy to do that. That's something new. And can I say, we agree on the merits and substance of the case. There, there, there's, not, there's not any problem there. We, we certainly know that there's an issue and that we want to see this fixed in our county. Um, I guess the fact of the matter is, a, a lot of what we're hearing tonight, in my opinion, from, um, from your side, is that you know we, we are having a hearing on February the 26th. We need to retain you all now so that we can get on that, unless we're able to do that within a 30-day period that you all have talked about. Um, and that it, it may not happen, so our best chance is, is to just not. And so, and, and please understand when I say this, I don't mean this offensively, okay? But it's almost like I'm, I'm buying a used car. It's kind of like I'm sitting in, in a used car salesman's office and they're telling me, okay, you've got a really good deal here, but you've got to buy it today because it might be going tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, would, I would rather have a chance, and, and of course, we've already voted down the, the motion to refer it to a committee, so, but, but I'd really rather have a chance to put you all through the same amount of scrutiny that we put through or the commission before I've only been here a month, so I'm a new guy. Um, but I would really like to put you all through the same scrutiny that we did the Jesse Law Firm. Uh, and so that that's that's my position at this point. I think that's all I want to share. I, I can answer some questions just in case anybody has some. I can tell you our law firm's been around since 1952. Um, we do mass tort practice. We were on the steering committee for the big bull fight in the MDL case and one of the zillion dollars. Um, you can look at our website. We're, you know, I think quite well known. We've got offices um, here in Tennessee and also we've just opened in Kentucky, Ohio, and also Washington, D.C. Um, so that's us. I personally am one of your lawyers. I would be one of your lawyers. Um, I've already done a lion's share of the work on the case. Um, I've been practicing law for 20 years. Um, and it would be me here personally updating you as often as you want. You want me here every month? You want to hear me ever every month? I'm here every month. Um, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that you need. But I can tell you, we will present you the, the contract will be exactly what we gave to Washington County, which is um, Unicoid just passed it. I just got information from my partner who's at Unicoid County, Unicoid just passed. So um, it, it wouldn't be any different. So, and, and once again, going back to that point, the, the contract that we will get will be the same one that's from Washington County. But at this point, if we retain you all, it's a foregone conclusion. That, con that contract is there whether we I mean, so we, we're doing this now. The contract's not really in place. I, mean, I think there's a piece of it that I've not been able to see. It's not in this packet. And I, I don't know why it's not in that packet, but I do believe it was in the previous packet. And I can tell you the only thing that, that is different is it says insert county name because it was a draft when it was sent. So we would insert that county name to Hawkins, right? We would insert that. Um, I do believe that there was a typo in the resolution that it said the case is pending in Hawkins County. It's actually pending in Sullivan County. So it makes that clear. In, um, in the retainer agreement. And then finally, the only thing that would change is us adding in one line that says, um, you know, we'll indemnify against any against any counterclaims, as it says in Washington County. So it's a very simple one-page document, and it was done that way to make it very simple. You want us to be your lawyers, we'll be your lawyers, and, and that's, that's the point. Thank you. We're going to recognize Mr. Barrett and after Mr. Barrett uh, speaks we're going to vote on this because question has been called for it. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, basically I've got three questions. Uh, the first question, uh, there seems to be a lot of talk about the email uh, that was sent out and you know I see a lot of the emails but I'm more curious as to what is actually on the contract. 
I mean, you you can you can show emails for two weeks, but you have to refer back to the contract. So I'm curious about what is the amount of the contract. Twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent on the contract. It's twenty-five percent plus cost. They told you, and they've told me this from the beginning. They will try to get the court to set their fee, and wouldn't come out of here more. They can't promise that, but that's how these things are done. But if they can't get that done, you will be presented, this is what they're willing to pay, and here's the deductions. And then you decide, well, you, you don't have to take it. You can turn it down and we go to trial. To be honest with you, I'd love to sit in a courtroom office, office and in there. Absolutely love it. But it's going to be your decision. And you're looking at millions of dollars versus thousands of dollars, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, my second question, uh, Ms. Jackson. Yes. In, in your proceedings and stuff, what is the number of clients that you're representing? In your contract, I represent you. That's it. Now, we have 13 other counties, but in your lawsuit, the heading I shared with you last time is just Hawkins County versus 10 other people. Three of them are the same manufacturers they have sued. And that's the three that would cross as to the causes of action. Two of those three are in bankruptcy. But as to your lawsuit, it is just Hawkins County. Okay. Okay. Uh, my last question, and I guess this would go back to uh, General Armstrong. Would you have any idea on the dollar amount of the... If, if we were in closed session, I could tell you what we talked about before the Supreme Court entered the order suspending jury trials. We were very close. I can say that much. But I can't say in uh, I can say in closed session, I can tell you what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Armstrong, I, I have one question. Yes, sir. Am I correct in saying that the only way these two lawsuits could come together where you would have possible two separate attorneys be is if this endo filed bankruptcy and all the defendants were in the bankruptcy court. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and I just want to be really clear, there, there's kind of this red herring where everybody's talking about bankruptcy court. Generally, here's how things work in bankruptcy court. You make a claim, someone else makes a claim, the bankruptcy um, plan is confirmed, and then there's a pot of attorney's fees that then everybody makes an application in for that. So you're not going to have a situation, I mean, I've never seen it in bankruptcy court, where you're getting you know, $10,000 or you know whatever it is that comes out of bankruptcy court, and then somebody's trying to take that money from that bankruptcy claim. Typically, what folks do is they go to this pot that is set aside for attorney's fees, and everybody makes an application for that. So Ms. Jesse's firm can make an application to that, we can make an application to that, and the court can decide okay, Mr. Svelte, do you think you did X amount of work? And Ms. Jesse, do you think you did X amount of work? And here's how we're gonna, um, we're gonna split it up. And for the bankruptcy and for any settlements that are going on in the opioid universe um, across the country, the discussions have been very fulsome about having that exact same type of situation set up. There is a, a pot for attorney's fees <laughs> that in any case, anybody who's done the work can come in and say, I wanna make application. And then if there's a fight over it between two lawyers, like I said, fighting amongst the lawyers, then there's actually a, an arbitrator and they go through this whole process and a mediator and the whole thing is done separate and apart from anything that has to do with you. So I just wanna be clear that, you know, typically it doesn't really become a problem because there's one pot that's set aside for attorney's fees and somebody else makes that decision. And the court would determine who would get what regardless of contract. Yes, sir, absolutely. Ms. Jesse, you want to vote? Yeah, uh, one other thing, it, she is correct about the attorney's fees and we're going to think about the cost here because we have filed a claim for you in bankruptcy court. The other thing, as he said, we have to go into closed session. I've been asking to go into closed session since December because Endo has been very specific. They would settle across the board. They would settle with everybody, not just them and not just us. So that is the other place that the fees will overlap, not in bankruptcy. But if Endo says, here's your pot of money, how are you all going to split it up? Questions been called for, and I, I, this body deserves an opportunity to vote on this. I hope 
that you all have been better educated than I have. I'm still mm -hmm. confused as I was when I come. But, you know, we're going to vote. Ask, ask everybody to cast your vote. How can we vote on a contract that we don't have? Uh, that's why I went and sent it back to the committee. Uh, I agree. The eleven that voted to not send it back know something we don't know. You're signing a certificate blank. We need to question has been called for. Is any of let me just say this. Question's been called for. Is any objections to the question? If not, we're gonna vote. That's right. Okay. Everybody cast your vote. Commissioner Housewright? No. Commissioner Trent? I will have to change because my sound went out and I could not hear most of the presentation. I had to dial back into the meeting. I apologize. Nine yes, nine no, three abstain. Resolution fails. And let me say this. The reason I abstain on this is I don't feel like I'm educated enough to vote. Um, and hopefully, Mr. Armstrong, you'll get a 30-day extension and the Public Safety Committee can take this back up and talk about it. Well, I guess that would be my question. Uh, since, since it resolution failed, we're going to have to tell the court that the first round failed. I don't know if the court will give us, but are you willing to reconsider it once the courts? It can be brought back up, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to our next uh, resolution, which is 21.203, and that's introduced by.